Management of Sagittal Malocclusion, Class 1 Malocclusion. In normal occlusion, the anterior posterior relationship according to the angular classification is classified according to the position of the mandibular first molar to the position of the maxillary first molar, where the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar occlude in the buccal developmental group of the mandibular first molar. In a class 1 malocclusion, the same angle classification of normal occlusion, but there is a deviation in the intra-arch discrepancy and include either crowding or malposition of one of the teeth in one arch or both arch or class one normally and when it is associated with other abnormality in the vertical dimension or the vertical relationship between the mandibular and maxillary arch uh, either deep bite or open bite is regarded as a class one malocclusion with deep bite or class one malocclusion with open bite some cases of a class one malocclusion where the angular classification is a class one but there is a cross bite or a transverse uh, discrepancy either cross bite posteriorly or anteriorly in the angle class one malocclusion the class the incisors have a class one incisor relationship where the incisor edge of the mandibular incisor occlude in the middle third of the maxillary uh, central incisor at the position of the cingulum plateau. Cases have a skeletal class 2 uh, relationship or class 2 skeletal pattern but the incisor relationship here is normal class 1 incisor relationship and when there is a normal class 1 incisor relationship on a class 2 skeletal pattern is regarded as an incisor compensation of the incisor relationship that compensate the defaulty in the skeletal pattern case of the class 3 skeletal pattern where the mandible is prognathic and the maxilla is retrognathic but here the angulation of the incisors are changed to compensate the maxillary retrognathism and mandibular prognathism or to compensate the class 3 skeletal pattern by a class 1 incisor relationship The class 1 malocclusion have a favorable soft tissue pattern or soft tissue in the class 1 malocclusion regard as normal that means competent lips with straight facial profile. The main etiological factor of a class 1 malocclusion is the dental factor. The dental factor, as in this case, is represented by the tooth arch size discrepancy. That means small arch with large teeth or small arch with normal size of the teeth and in this case cause a crowding. The opposite is true. When you have a large arch with normal size of teeth or normal arch with small size of the teeth cause a spacing and uh, this is called called tooth arch size discrepancy the other dental factor that cause a class 1 malocclusion is the premature loss of deciduous teeth that cause drifting of the adjacent teeth to the position of the extracted deciduous teeth and cause localized crowding or uh, class 1 malocclusion. The types of class 1 malocclusion include the crowding, 
either primary which include the arch tooth size discrepancy or secondary due to early loss of of the deciduous teeth or the tertiary which include the late incisor crowding the class one malocclusion include also the spacing either generalized or localized hypodontia median diastema biomaxillary protrusion is another type of class one malocclusion the class one malocclusion also as mentioned before is associated with vertical and transverse discrepancy such as class one may be associated with open bite or deep bite or cross bite Bimaxillary dento alveolar protrusion. The bimaxillary dento alveolar protrusion or bimaxillary proclination, also called, is include or either due to the bimaxillary prognathism. The bimaxillary prognathism include both the mandibular and maxillary arch located forward or protruded in relation to the cranium. Also, the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion characterized by the lip prominence. The lip prominence and inverted with the lip incompetence is the most uh, case or the most finding of the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion that need for orthodontic treatment and the important point here in the diagnosis of the bimaxillary protrusion is the diagnosis of the lip prominence where the incisor proclination bimaxillary which are the maxillary and mandibular incisor proclination should be associated with prominent lips and at the same time the lips should be incompetent the lip incompetency here that means the patient cannot close his lips during the rest position or at the rest position the lower and upper lip are separated more than four millimeter and in this case that means the incisor proclination are effect on the lip prominency and at the same time effect on the facial aesthetic of the patient and here the patient need for orthodontic treatment in addition the incisor proclination here due to the change in the what is what i mean here the normal inter incisor angle between the maxillary and mandibular incisors are 137 degree but in cases of bimaxillary dental proclination the inter incisor angle between the mandibular and maxillary teeth is about 107 degree only the change in the angulation of the maxillary or the inter incisor angle between the maxillary and mandibular incisor is causing a dental proclination or bimaxillary dental proclination and this proclination will affect on the lip competency and when it is effect on the lip competency the case need for an orthodontic treatment so the treatment of bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion is either one accepting the incisor relationship or accepting the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion and no need for treatment and especially in the patient of afro-caribbean or black accent or black people patient 
and in this case in this people the lip prominency and thick or full lip appearance is normal for this people but keep in your mind the thick lip and the lip prominency should be associated with competent lip so the lip competency with the lip prominence and in a black people or afro-caribbean people here the treatment not indicated and you have to tell your patient to accepting the incisor relationship in other way in white people and incompetent lip and broke lined incisor here the patient need for fixed orthodontic appliance the fixed orthodontic appliance is corrected and associated with extraction of the first premolar as in this case how the after treatment the space of the extracted first premolar corrected to the class one incisor relationship and the class one canine relationship and the cases of of bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion need for maximum anchorage or the class one molar relationship should be kept and not cause lossing or proclination of the posterior teeth and only retraction of the anterior teeth to correct the bimaxillary protrusion in severe cases of the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion we need for a bimaxillary surgery and keep in your mind in the surgery cases or fixed or co or maybe combined with fixed orthodontic appliance the stability of the case because the stability of the dental alveolar protrusion is poor due to the retraction of the anterior teeth may cause encroachment of the tongue space and and the tongue here try to take its normal space intraorally and pushing the incisor forward and cause relapse of the uh, bimaxillary protrusion in addition in the cases of the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion there should be a good muscle tone of the lips to produce normal anterior oral seal by competent lip by changing the condition of incompetent lip of the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion to normal competent lip after correction of the labial segment the most cases of the bimaxillary dental alveolar protrusion need for a permanent retention due to the high lip percent of the relapse. Thank you.